the forces in a climb. From the previous lessons, you'll remember that there are four forces in action in flight. Those same forces are in action in a climb. A vector. This is a quantity which has both direction and magnitude. That is to say, it has direction and strength. A resultant vector. This is a single vector which is the sum of two or more vectors. The example here shows the green lift and blue thrust. Together they form a single vector which is shown in orange. This can be called the thrust, lift vector. It is the combining forces, of lift and thrust, resulting in a force up and forward. There is also the weight, drag vector. This is the combining forces of weight and drag. These result in a force down and backward or, rearward. When we put an airplane into a climb, most of the forces are following the same pattern. Thrust acts in line with the power plant or propeller. Drag acts rearward against the direction of travel. And lift acts perpendicular to the direction of travel. But weight will always act towards the earth, as it follows the law of gravity exclusively. We still have vectors, when we are climbing. They help to visualize what's happening to our forces. You can see that the first change is with the drag, weight vector. Notice that the drag is still in line and opposite to the direction of travel. This has the effect of pointing drag towards the ground. As it is acting towards the ground, it is adding to the weight of the airplane. This weight increase now makes it harder for us to climb, as the airplane weighs more. Look what happens now to the thrust lift vector. The lift is tilted rearward. Just like in the induced drag scenario, we saw the lift tilt rearward and create induced drag. This has the same effect, but it also reduces the lift available for staying level, let alone making the airplane climb. In order to start to climb, there will need to be an increase in one or more of the forces in action. There's not much we can do to increase lift, once we have set an attitude. So therefore, the only thing we can do is to increase thrust. Increasing thrust will increase our thrust lift vector, enough so that it will balance out the drag weight vector.